Okay, I've got five o'clock. Call this meeting to order, February twenty second, twenty twenty four. I'll ask uh, Councilman Jeff Renfro for a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you, Lord, just to seek your guidance tonight. Lord, we ask that you would fill our spirits with your your will, and ask that uh, you lead us in uh, making the right decisions for our citizens, for our city, and Lord, just uh, be with us as we go throughout the rest of this evening's business. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jeff. Before you have the minutes of uh, January 30th, 2024 meetings, after review, I'll ask for a motion to accept the minutes as read. I'll make a motion accepted. I have a first by Mary Bell. Second. Second. Second by Tony. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like side. So. Motion carries. Uh, Tara, do you have anything right now or are you just going to follow in the discussions when we... Okay. All right. Before you have the financial report... We have a... Did you pick this up at the office? The handbook? Do you need the handbook? Do you need the handbook? Can we have one that says like this? Yes. Yeah, that's the last, the second page is the last one. What do you look for, Jerry? This is missing a thing. Oh, there's a missing one. Uh-huh. I didn't want you to know that. <laughs> well, I, I could fake it and make it pretty good. <laughs> Okay, before you have the financial reports. No, you don't. What are you looking for? Well, he needs the minutes in his package. Your special for call some in. reason, they're missing. Went straight to the financial page. Here, take this. Is that what you're looking for? Do we need to turn both meetings? No, it's all the same. Sorry, um, Is that? <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're got me off the top there. Sorry. It's okay. Before you have the financial reports, I'll ask for a motion to accept when reviewed. I'll make a motion to accept the financial reports. I'll second. second. First and second. You got it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like so. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, um, Jeff, I'm going to let you explain this one a little bit. Um, you, this was uh, old business. Basically, that's the playground equipment that he talked about the last meeting, if y'all recall. Um, Yeah, it, so it's on the back. So there, there's a few, there's a few items. There's this rockabout thing, uh, and these prices are just what was on the internet. I didn't speak with a representative or or a, an agent or anything like that. This was just to give us an idea of what we're looking at. Uh, the rockabout was priced on the internet for five thousand six hundred and eighty-seven dollars. The uh, Sky Run Zip Track was fourteen thousand. You might as well say fifteen thousand dollars. And then the uh, Inclusive World was eighteen thousand six hundred and thirty-three dollars. Those were just three things. Of course, we've already made purchase of the swing. Uh, instead of going with the big outfit like we just purchased last summer and. And the, the maintenance guys got done this past week. Uh, we kind of looked at some things, just a, a couple pieces that would maybe add on to the swing. Uh, these are just suggestions. Uh, these are a few things that uh, Allie 
Marshall and I picked out. Uh, so this, these are the, the three items. Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Would we need to move to get an official quote from? The so uh, that he, she did discuss it with him today, Brian Noel, and I will be in contact with him tomorrow. But this is this is uh, internet price. I think I can make it probably a little bit cheaper on that. Um, but if you all are in favor of this, I'll take a motion to approve this for the uh, give or take around thirty nine thousand two hundred eighty six dollars. Give or take to that. Yeah, sure. Uh, even if we want these three items, we don't have. You know, these are just. Yeah, it's open for dis items. it's open for discussion. Whatever y'all think on this, but this. Uh, keep in mind, this we can take this out of the ARPA funds. Uh -huh. um, so, this is open discussion on this matter. If y'all want to make a motion to approve this coming from ARPA funds, that's totally up to you guys. I'll make a motion that we approve the playground equipment with the use of ARPA funds. And a second. I have a first and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Pulls like side. Motion carries. And then the <coughs> clarification that it, you do want that out of ARPA funds. Yeah. Yes. Well, with that being said, roughly around the quoted amount. Yeah. Uh, and we that's, might need to bring it back to the table. Please. Yeah. And I'm going to talk to him tomorrow and okay. see what we can do on numbers. Okay. So... Also, probably patrol needs to be. Uh, and that, with that being said, we might have to. I'll, I'll throw this out there because we might see if we can see. We might have to reevaluate this a little bit. Looking at it now, because I seen Jason sitting over there. I got you. Uh, but <laughs> we might see what an uh, installment would be as well on this. So that might be something else to look at as well. So that might be a different quote from that. It'll be stupid. We'll so, it can't be no harm while we just got to All right, thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to bring uh, Chief York up for a minute so we can get him out trolling these streets. I created a package for each one of you guys and kind of give you an update with our department. And, uh, what we are doing with our goals on. I forgot the fidget spinners and the sunglasses, but we did just previously order <laughs> those. I know y'all got a lot on your plate, so I'll make it quick. Huh. Yeah, they didn't speak up. Do you want this? <laughs> I need to get used to it. Either. <laughs> All right. Um, basically, our call volume it peaked a little bit from last year, uh, from the year before, uh, 2023. Uh, call trends, call natures. They're they're starting to deviate from what's normal for us. So we are actually uh, doing a lot more proactive police work in our community. Uh, been a lot, been available for the public a lot more. Definitely want to focus on public outreach as to the pamphlets. We also got fidget spinners, sunglasses, things like that. Public relations with the youth in our schools. We also increased our presence at Wayland Elementary as well. So I um, think that's beneficial for the now city. You're doing what at the elementary schools? We are there in the mornings yeah. and also drop off. <laughs> Uh, and also any kind of events that they have, they need assistance on there. They're, they're going to contact, contact us and going to create a, more of a presence. Well, I like this. Are you all going to have help yes, presentations on? Yes, ma'am. Right now, keeping up the, drugs and things. Yeah, I'm in the works of talking to a lot of school age children and stuff, like making uh, impromptu visits to the classrooms and talk yeah. with little 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 guys there. And, and uh, hopefully kind of deter the behavior that is common for, for children in broken homes, things like that. And, and give a lot more resources out to the community. You know, it's a lot That's more great. than what we have been doing, so I want to promote that a lot more. Um, and of course, the children are our future, so we want to 
do what we can to make an effort. Uh, as far as call volume, uh, we anticipate having a lot more activity this year, uh, more extra patrols, uh, and making ourselves a lot more available in the general public. Rather than staying stagnant, sitting at the office, we want to make sure we're out and about, intermingle with the public and everything like that. Uh, pretty much beat down our streets the way they need to be uh, patrolled. And uh, if we're out and about and somebody needs something, we're there. Um, there's a couple things that we're trying to pursue, like uh, body cams. Uh, we are in the works right now. I'm going to talk to Brad uh, tomorrow and, and uh, explore the avenues of grants uh, pertaining to body cameras. Uh, I did get a quote from Axon. They are $34,000, but hopefully we can get government funding that can alleviate that cost for those. I think they're beneficial for uh, transparency reasons. And I think we, as a police department, need to be held accountable a lot more than what we uh, are used to, like, such as the old days. We didn't have that extra part of accountability there. So I think that would be beneficial for us. Uh, also, we're working with, uh, well, I'm working with Ms. Martin over there. We're uh, trying to get the policy and procedure manual completed. <coughs> Ours was dated in 2004, so we're trying to update everything within 2023 with all the updated verbiage and everything like that. I do have uh, a request for, for uh, it's going to be a drug, uh, drug or toxic substance uh, incinerator. Uh, right now, we take numerous items in and evidence, such as uh, drugs, narcotics, we hold on to those for a temporary amount of time, and then at that point, when the case is disposed of, we have to uh, destroy these these items. Uh, and pretty much, it's it's hard to safely do this. So, previously, on how we destroyed these items was a burn burn. So basically, we put things in there. We we burn them. We set with them until they to their ashes, basically. But that produces a lot of emissions, a lot of toxic smoke, uh, and we do not want to go that route anymore. So I got a quote, uh, it's also included in those packages, uh, called the Drug Terminator. It's a portable incinerator, but it, it has cyclone uh, technology to where it burns off clean and no smoke. So it also has a, has a cap that goes over uh, it. Pretty much burns it down to about three inches of ash um, and then we can safely dispose of that ash in accordance, in accordance with uh, guidelines with the EPA and things of that nature. Uh, it's approximately $5,660, $350 shipping. Um, we intend, if we, if we do purchase this item, we intend to purchase it through the opioid fund. Uh, which uh, would make it a lot easier, more feasible. And this will be beneficial for all the other yes. departments around too, as well. So not only us here at our department, everybody else in the county would be able to use this. So it would have been a Where you have it placed. It'll be back there in our evidence bay. Uh, okay. And whenever it's time to destroy, uh, we plug it up. It's 110. We plug it up to an outlet. Bring it outside the bay in a safe location, a good distance away. We sit out there and it takes approximately 30 minutes for everything to burn down. So it's uh, not really time consuming. Uh, it's, uh, it's way safer than And no do. emissions, it's just all self-contained? It burns clean. It's kind of like a smoker. Once you get that white smoke out of the way, mm -hmm. it just burns clean. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Chief York? What was the cost again? It's uh, 5660 plus shipping. That's $350. Uh, so approximately $6,000. Well, approximately about $6,000. And just so for clarification, Jeff, this, this uh, opiate money can't be utilized on certain things other than law enforcement or rehabs or something of that sort. So this is one of those things that we can use that, and, and we will continue to get opiate, opiate money. So uh, just so, just so for clarification. Is that a line on item on our budget, or is that just something? Um, no, it's not on a line item, is it? It's not. 
No. Budget, okay. No. You know how much we're spending? We're required to spend anything. Yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah, get, you know it, we'll get it for the next 18 years. Okay. Oh. I think it would be a really beneficial buy for us. Uh, how many times a year we would need to burn something? Uh, right now, our evidence room is overcrowded. Uh, I've submitted three destruction orders, and they're probably about three pages long. So uh, after that initial uh, destruction order, we intend to do it safely, mm -hmm. 10 cases per order. So in, in, in length of time, we can get a lot of use out of it. Not only would we get a, a usual use out of it, other agencies will as well. So once you're caught up on the evidence that needs to be destroyed, will it be, I mean, I guess I mean kind of maintaining it, the usage of it, and uh, I guess reasonable because it sounds like yeah. you've got a stockpile. Right. Are you going to be able to reasonably, well, in that, a timely manner, dispose of stuff right. with the size purge, of this? We, we commonly get a lot of drugs that are found, too, uh, and we're kind of limited on how we can dispose of those immediately. So we usually have to wait until another destruction order. Uh, but if we had this, all we would have to do is fire it up and throw the found drugs and okay. toxic substance in there and then we just get those out of the way quickly. I believe the county ASAP group had uh, reached what? out to somebody about uh, obtaining money. So we, we, talked, uh, we talked with Adam about this, and, and they was in the works of getting one, and I told Adam, I said, either or we'll work together on this to get this established for everybody to be able to use. I haven't heard no more about it. Adam really hasn't said no more about it. Um, well, and, the, the, we had actually had an ASAP meeting today. Our budget is set. It's already been submitted, so you're familiar with how that works. Uh, and so I was going to say, you know, that's something that we could help out with, but it wouldn't be until right. And I, and I think spring. that's and I think that's one of the unique things too that that money's still going to be available to us. So it's better yeah, it, it's that, better that to get, gonna... spend it and lose it. Well, so, and my and, thinking and is, you know, so. if we have a heavy flow of drugs that come in, and it's not a bad price, do we need two? I mean. If we have the funds? We, ASAP did provide drop-off boxes, drug drop-off boxes, right. at uh, Miriam Police Department. There's one at the Sheriff's Office. I think we put one in at... Oh, is there one here, too? Yeah, there's one. Uh, and I think there's one in Centertown? I think so. Yeah. I think so. So, you know, that was... Yeah. One thing that we had discussed at ASAP meeting was uh, there used to be a DEA Mm -hmm. that would come, come get it, like, monthly or something. But I don't think that's happening anymore. And I think the reason why some are pushing and some want to have the incinerators is because the <coughs> other proper way of doing it is burying it in the landfill. Yeah. So all those drugs would just be sent yeah. to the landfill to do whatever they're going to do in the ground. So right. it's much better yeah. to be sending ashes off. Then, then to let them leach. Yeah. yeah. So, right. well, for example, just the other day, uh, we conducted yeah. a search warrant. Yeah. We seized yeah. about eight and a half pounds of marijuana. So, with burying that and all, versus incinerating that, we wouldn't ex exactly produce a lot of smoke to where somebody standing by could get a contact buzz, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and it's a lot of a lot of uh, drugs that we accumulate. But so the, when you the get them in the drop-off, <coughs> you, yeah. how do you do the drop-off? Well, with the drop-off, they come in, they put it in the in the thing, or in the uh, drop-off box, goes into another box. We took four bags to destroy, uh, I'm going to say, July of last year, and just from that one box. And yeah. It, never been, it hasn't been dumped forever. That's really a good problem to have, just showing people are purging of their stuff in their home. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Not only that, keep people from trying to pill for it too. Yes. Right. Because yes. they will. Uh, we need to get it out of the way. I so think do we, we need a motion? Buy. Yeah, I'm going to ask for a motion to approve. I'll make a motion yeah. to approve. Yeah. Purchase in the I have a first and second by Jeff. First, first by station, second by Jeff. And this to be taken out of opiate. It's nice to hear it. Uh, Chief York, I appreciate everything that you've done. You, uh, 
I asked him to come in to kind of do a little spill of what they've been up to. And I also want to showcase our new guy, Dallas Dukes, just got graduated the police academy. Uh, so we're, we're glad to have you back and look forward to seeing the hard work that you put into it. So thank you. I like that. I like the idea of increased patrol, especially sitting here. We're delving a lot of money into playground equipment and vandalisms at all time high and all that stuff. And, Robert, right. since I got your attention, I am going to say I really appreciate seeing a car out in front of Wayland in the morning where people tend to pass the shoulder there on 69. That was my pet peeve from the beginning. Mark there all the time. So, like, I told him. Talk a little bit night, came up that and I you know what? I got to tell a funny story. I told him, I said, sit over there and write tickets. Please. Well, one of my cousins got a ticket over there. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. No favoritism for family. <laughs> So thank you. Anything you need, just reach out. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. All right. Next we have um, Atmos uh, here with us. Um, you want to come forward to sure. discuss this a little bit? Sure. Hi, I'm uh, Mary Tucker, and I'm uh, with Atmos Energy out of Owensboro. And the Hartford... Uh, Natural gas franchise expires in May of this year. And it has been a 20 year franchise. So uh, this is your franchise. Um, we, uh, it benefits us because we can put our lines in the ground, we can maintain our lines, we can replace our lines uh, in the city right away. Uh, it benefits the city because when we do those things, we will make sure that we have anything we have, uh, any ground we've disturbed, any sidewalks that we've uh, had to remove or street cuts, that we put things by the way they should be. So it does benefit both of us. And also we can't have someone else coming in and laying uh, lines over top of ours. Uh, so that's another piece of the franchise. Uh, <clears throat> we are asking for uh, the same uh, as it has been, 1% for the 20 years. So um, I know that's a long time, and uh, we have uh, uh, surrounding areas that do the same thing, 1% 20 years. Beaver Dam is, Whitesville's 10 years, but they're at 1%. Uh, Fordsville, they do per meter charge. So the surrounding areas are normally at 1% uh, for that time frame. Uh, we have like 64 franchises in the state of Kentucky. And the majority of them are at a 1% rate. Whenever I say 1% rate, that we actually uh, administer that for you. It's collected on our gas bills, but it is a tax that are paid by the people that have natural gas. And it's based on their consumption. So uh, every quarter we will take that amount and we will uh, send a check to the city for that 1% franchise fee. Just to basically explain what they're proposing here, so for the franchise, any franchise agreement, um, essentially you're going to pass an ordinance not authorizing bids for the gas, and then it would be uh, a collection of those bids. No big surprise, we probably only one. I don't know of any other gas company, natural gas company, that would bid in on that. At that time, you would you would decide to approve the bid and franchise agreement. So yes. we'll just be passing the original ordinance, which is except two two bid for the franchise. Right. And this, and just so you know, um, this will just be the first reading, so there won't be no vote on this. Um, but I wanted her to bring in, bring her in to explain this. I told her it's kind of important. I don't want it to hit us whenever it comes up. I'd rather get on top of things if there was any questions in the long run of it. So I thank you for coming, Robbie. I appreciate you coming yes. as well. This is Robbie Porter, and he he's one of our locals here in Ohio yes. County. Robbie lives here in Hartford. He is our uh, operation supervisor. He works uh, mostly with the construction folks. So anything that's done in underground, Robbie hands. That's when he crews are all out, you know, maintenance tasks, leak repairs, things like that. That's kind of what I oversee. And you know, part of that's uh, you know the work we do in our communities, surrounding communities, and how we how we go about uh, fixing our lines, maintaining our system, and then also you know how we fix everything back: sidewalk, street cuts, backfilling. You know, the pride we take. Uh, and and they've been correctly. wonderful to work with. I know with our water maintenance, anytime fire, anytime that we have anything going on, uh, y'all are always there to help us out. So we do You'll appreciate notice, that. I noticed that this week 
their valves. He's down in front of the shop on my Frederick Street. They've been painting them, painting the barriers. Yeah. So uh, we we see a lot of it. So thank you all. Do you, uh, council members, do y'all have any questions for them before? So we know we we've already done twenty years. Was was you guys here before this last agreement or franchise? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, but was Atlas was is this like the second time that we renewed this or? Yeah, Atlas has been the only. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes. If you want to look back historically, uh, Hartford and Beaver Dam was piped in 1964. Yeah, so that's what I was. The system was, yeah. uh, the service was provided here. This is okay. uh, And, you know, we, you want we want to one? be a good community yeah. provider, and we, we have people that live here and work and work with us and have for many years, and uh, we would just like to continue on with that relationship and anytime anything comes up you can always contact us or anything that you need to ask about uh, we'll be glad to help you and it's a non-exclusive franchise too so just in case there's yes. another one that comes in you're not bound to only have access that's correct it is non-exclusive okay all right thank you uh does anybody have any questions now on that if not i'm going to have stacia read the uh ordinance on that Ordinance 2024-01, an ordinance of the City of Parkford, Kentucky, providing for the creation and sale of a franchise for the privilege of constructing, transporting, operating, maintaining, and distributing natural gas along and under public right-of-way within the City of Parkford, Kentucky, for a term of 20 years in consideration for which the successful franchise shall pay to the City an annual sum equal to 1% of its revenues and further establishing a bid procedure for the award of said franchise to the successful bidder. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Okay, moving on. Next, I have uh, uh, Planning and Zoning Board Member Tommy Cash to serve from February 2024 to February 2028. And I need a motion to accept Tommy Cash as a board member. I make a motion to accept him as a board member. I second. Have a first and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like so. Motion carries. Thank you. Next up, um, this is just kind of an informational thing. I've, I've reached out to a couple people on code enforcement. If y'all have any good candidates... Have them come see me, fill out an application. Let's see what we can do to get somebody in here pretty quickly. Has it been posted it on has. Facebook and the newspaper? I don't know that it has been on Facebook yet. Yeah, we'll see what we can do. On, we'll talk to Meredith and see if we can get them on Facebook as well. But okay. uh, Just see if we can reach out to somebody and we'll go from there. It has to be somebody a little bit stern. So. so that's all I've got on code enforcement. Um, the next, I don't know where it's at. Am I? Okay, thank you. The next, we, uh, after discussion with Meredith and a few others, this is in consideration of a purchase of a stage for, for events that we may have here in Hartford. And this could be set up for various things. Um, we rented one last year. I think it was right around. I'm thinking maybe two grand at the most. So I feel like in the long run, if we did this, I think we would be money ahead by trying to purchase one. Um, and that total is eight thousand one hundred nine dollars and fourteen cents. And again, this is nothing. This is just bringing it to the table. If it's open for discussion if you don't think so. Um, Where would it be stored? We would probably have to put it down there at the city maintenance until we I use it. Huh? Yeah. Put it in your backyard? <laughs> um, would we share it with other... Do what? Would we share it with other communities, neighboring communities? That would so be would something be that we, it, we could follow up with that later uh, if we done that I would assume that we probably need to put a agreement out there maybe and 
and maybe a lease agreement for that matter, um, because these things, I mean, it's not a whole lot to it, but it'd still take them time to go set up and sure. stuff like that, so that's something that we could work out later if we want to go that route. Well, I yeah. think if we yeah. want the city to continue having events, we need one. Do we have inside storage for that, or is it outside? Uh, yeah, so we'll uh, we'll store it. In. We got room down there. The maintenance building. I'll find somewhere to put it. Yeah. Um, and I think that, uh, let's see. What did you notes. say the cost was? The cost is $8,109.14. Is this something that we could purchase out of the ARPA funds? That, so that? that can as well, but we can also, if, if you would like, uh, we can take it out of EDC if you would like as well. So either either or how you want to approach that. What's our deadline on uh, being through spending the ARPA December. funds? December. You have to have projects in play before uh, December of this year. I'll make a motion that we go by the stage to set up for events. I have a first and second. Uh, what from what? What uh, fun? Yeah, what fun? Huh? What Arpa or what? I think economic development. Okay. All right. I have a motion to accept this. Um, out of, coming out of uh, economic development. All right, I have a first and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Who's like to say Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Next, let's see what we have here. Okay, so this is this is something that's not set in stone. Um, hey, Dustin, can you come in here for a minute? I want you to look at this before we... I want you to take it. Take a look at this and see if you think this is um, basically compatible with what we're looking at. Um, if we would need anything else in the long run of that, or for sound equipment? Yep, for downtowns on the light poles out. There. Oh, the for the poles and yes. things like that. Yep. In the world, do you need a thirteen hundred dollar laptop for just to run one piece of equipment? Wireless. Huh? It is wireless. wireless. Oh, it's wireless system? Yeah. I would wonder, like she was saying about the laptop, I would wonder if the laptop is purely for programming or there's some sort of software that makes the thing go. Because if, it, if it's purely just something that you plug, plug a headphone in to play music with, your phone can handle that. Yeah. But... I think one of the things, too, that I want, what I think me and Meredith has, has discussed was basically we was going to try to talk to the radio station as well, be able to play their music during mm -hmm. that time. Christmas holidays, we could play that, but also have the microphone access yeah. to whenever we wanted to get out there. So, Mobile master transmitter, fixed transmitter, yeah. So I'll just kind of note that if you are going to be broadcasting music of that sort, you typically have to have some sort of licensing agreement. Yeah. Well, it, right, and I've, I've emailed Andy, and so that's something. Yeah, that that that, that was something. That's going to be your big thing. And, and it's not nothing set in stone. But because believe it or not, the good folks at BMI do come around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and I mean, that's... They will come visit you. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I mean, as, as long as, for the most part, as long as the music that you're running is from the radio station, you can probably get away with that because that kind of puts it on them. You're not doing anything. Right. And the music people are getting their cut. But as far as the system, I mean, the system costs what it costs. Uh, and I doubt there's a whole lot of competitors to where you can, I mean, that are in the game. Is that just strictly downtown, or is that running up through the library? So the, uh, that's what I'm going to try to do, and I would like to set some up here eventually, but this was kind of like a ballpark thing, but I'd like to come up to the library as well up here in Washington around the community center, maybe put them on the light poles or something over here. That's so. where we have our... Yeah. yeah. So, okay. so that's something that... Um, 
So these will just be put out during our events. They won't stay out. They'll stay out. They'll stay out permanent. Yep. And this can be in our books. Yes, that's that's something that I was shooting for. And like I said, this this is a ballpark figure. About the only thing that I would do is maybe see with that particular company some cities that have used their stuff. Central City's got to set up. Greenville does. Bowl, I talked to one of the guys and he told us to come out and look at it with both that class and they had an opportunity to go down. But it is wireless also. And I it's gave good. somebody your number the other day. It was supposed to come down and talk to you. Um, but this is something that they don't have to be voted on tonight because this number might change. We don't know until we look at it. Um, but I, I wanted to bring this up and even if you all are okay with this amount, and we can regroup on it and see where we're at from there, however y'all want to approach this. But yeah, if everything's wireless, that's... So whenever we have events, and like this past, we had, we had guest singers and things mm -hmm. like that, would we be able to broadcast through those speakers as well? It says you have a mobile transmitter. So yeah. All you have to do is go to whatever sound system they're using and plug it in. But if, I don't know if you've been in theory. during the day, especially around the courthouse in Greenville, they play the local radio stations, they yeah. play music and everything like that. It's really uh, cool. They're around the, yeah. around the courthouse yeah. they're, they're at their festivals and stuff like mm -hmm. that. They will have like their MC yeah. who speaks through and stuff. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like So if y'all are, I mean, I will, I'll tell you what I'll do, and that's a good valid point on the laptop. I will note all this. <coughs> but if you all are good with the price of the 24500 to come out of ARPA, I will see where we're at in that budget, if that's secured, and see what we can come up with in that matter if I, if I have a motion to, to approve I'll make this. a motion, Mayor, that we accept the 24500 out of ARPA funds for the Street Sounds Downtown Music and Event Support System. I'll second. Okay, I have a first and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like so. Thank you all. I think this is going to benefit. And we'll, I will be in contact if we have any other hiccups. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Man, you got me notes everywhere. Hey, Bo. <laughs> On the that, when they put the light poles in, remember they did run. They run. But you would have to, if you went with just that, You'd have to run wires just to them poles mm -hmm. down there on our parking lot. You'd have to build a box and you know, yeah. set all that up. So wireless will be better. Yeah. Like you said, we can get yeah. more power. I think I would also look for the warranty. Yeah. I'll, let me jot that on that. Wherever I mean, that, that was the thing that, that I, I, I was really talking about with other cities that are using that particular setup. Yeah. It's simply because, I mean, they're going to sit out there and they're going to get... They're going to get hot, they're going to get rained on, they're going to get snowed on. Mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, the longevity mm -hmm. is, is the thing. Because it's it's just going to take a beat. It's just sitting out there in the open. Okay. Okay, next. So, Meredith, has, she gave you all the schedule for the last meeting. <coughs> so, basically, what this is going to do is we, if it's okay with you all, um, we need to go on and approve for the ice skating ring for the December festival, which will be the 14th of 2024. Purchase or rent? Uh, it would be December the 14th. December. Yep. The event starts at 10 o'clock. What were you saying? Is this for the rental of it? Is that a rental price? Or yeah, purchase? that's the rental price. I'm sorry. That's okay. What's the rental price? The rental price is four thousand five hundred and ten dollars. I think it's actually fifty one. I think I Yep, I'm sorry. She's correct. That's why she's here. <laughs> it's fifty one nineteen ninety nine. Okay. Forty five ten is a required deposit. Uh and I guess uh hmm. what's competitive? Can you say? Uh, if you, if, do I have a motion to uh, approve this, and then I'll need to know uh, where the 
funds will come from. I make a motion that we accept the rental bid for the ice rink for a December event and that be taken out of, is it an ARPA thing or does it need to be EDC? I don't think you can take that out of rental. Let's make it EDC then. A second motion. All right, station first, second by Mary Bell. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed the next side, motion carries. Thank you. Okay, so last year uh, we done this as well in economic development festival funding. What we done last year, if y'all recall, we set ten thousand dollars aside, basically for use of whenever they do events. Instead of something coming up, we have that allocated for them when these projects come up. So that's not saying that money will be spent, all of it, but it's just there for secure reasons when we do uh, events. Would that, just curious, would the ice rink, is that separate from that? It probably would need to be about half the cost, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's kind of like yeah. And that's, I don't think that's something that's, I think that's how we We do have to pay the reindeer, and we do have to pay for marketing, and those things are already booking up, and that's why Mary is doing all this early, is because if we don't do it now, we won't get it. How did we use, we had 10,000 did we use the whole 10000 last year? Do you, do I don't think we used all so of 10, it. So 10000 would probably it be a good... It was just a cap. Yeah. I, uh, I know, uh, I'm not sure about this last year, my years, but I I've been to more funerals than I've been to festivals, unfortunately, in the last couple of years. But uh, I know the first year, obviously, it was a very free event. I think even vendors, it was free and, and mm -hmm. things of that nature. But I didn't know if there was any intention to try and recoup some Yeah, of and that's something that we, that's something that I told Meredith in the beginning. Uh, we obviously wanted to bring the people back, and so that's something that we're going to gradually work back to get. Uh, I know that she charged for the vendors for the the Christmas one, correct? So that's something that we're we're trying to work back getting, but we started from scratch a little bit there. Um, so I'm sure she will, and that was kind of unique for us this year because it kind of. Surprised us a little bit on how that's working now on the tax end of that. Yeah, I, I was so that's this. so that's something that was kind of unique for us. But she's done a wonderful job getting things back clear how we needed to be. But yeah. <laughs> Amorous, I'm sorry. So does anybody have any other questions on that? EDC money, EDC funds. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we set ten thousand as a EDC funds for the festival funding. A second. I have a first and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, like side. Motion carries. Thank you. I will say that there's a lot here on this, but I, I do appreciate you all, and um, maybe maybe we'll regroup. Talk about something else a little bit differently, but I do appreciate that, and I know the citizens will as well. Yeah, well, that's a big basket, man. He lives here in Harkin, but his little boy loves it. He's talking about it, and then we down to Nashville, and we made the church done the free s'mores. You know, he, he thought that was just amazing. He went down there, he had to pay for it, because he bought it, but he loved it. He keeps asking me, well, what's coming up? Is there more coming up? Uh, are you doing more to the playground? Because the boy was playground. I said, it's all in the works, but. People do good. You know, they are excited at what we are doing. I think so, too. I think so, too. I think citizens I think are appreciating really our efforts. Hard. All right. Thank you. Um, next, we have the personnel policy handbook. Um, Tara, do you... Uh, My only caveat on that is, like I said, the... Uh, KLC staff attorneys do you know, fine jobs from a legality standpoint. I don't really see anything. Uh, it's just sometimes with these things, you don't know what's wrong until you have to apply it. And, but the 
beauty of it is we can amend it as we need it. Yeah. I know they. I know my head's hurt by looking at a lot of it. I know Lisa's had it even more than mine because she said you need to sit here and listen to this. So it's much more thorough and, and better than <laughs> what we've been offering. And, and and that's something yeah, that I, I'm I'm very proud of that we're getting done because even when we're when we're gone from here, this is this is going to be taken care of. So that's something that we we all could be proud of. Um, I guess I need a, um, a roll call on that. No. Okay. So does that need to be read? Okay. Stacy's my reader. <laughs> uh, Commonwealth of Kentucky, City of Hartford, Municipal Order Number Twenty Twenty Four Zero One in regard to personnel policies. That all that needs to be read. Yeah, that's right. Just a quick summary. Uh, it's just a policy, or the uh, it's the position of the city council to adopt the city of Hartford employee handbook dated February twenty second, twenty twenty four, for personnel policies and procedures handbook to govern and uh, replace any prior policies that we have on the city. Thank you. Um, so that's it on that. Right. Okay. Okay, I need a motion to adopt this. I make a motion. I have a first by Tony. Second. I second. I heard that. <coughs> I have a first and second. And this is take a roll call? No. No roll call? Okay. <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Like so. Motion carries. Thank you. This may be our first municipal aye. order we've done with this council, but just to kind of ever update everybody, municipal order, it, it's not nearly as written as the ordinance, doesn't have to be published or anything, and it's just actually basically a formal action taken by the council. Okay. Thank you. I think it's very important. I read that thing back, started making notes, and then decided, no, this is covered here. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, yeah. I did. I didn't enjoy War and Peace anymore. Than I did. <laughs> what I was looking for. I actually found the twenty dollars take to the last page very. Appreciate it. So those that didn't read it, you need to. Well, that I was digital. Okay. All right. This is this should be it on there, right here. Discussion. Yeah, that that'll be discussion. Um, next, I need a motion to remove Brent Lindsay and Bo Wright from the drug fund bank account at the Commonwealth Community Bank. So I, I need that motion. I make a motion to remove Brent Lindsay and Bo Wright from the bank account. I, I have a first and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, also, I need a motion to create a new signature card at the Commonwealth Community Bank on the drug fund count, including Roger York and Bo Wright. These bank statements must be mailed to 116 East Washington Street. I need I a, make motion. a motion. I make a motion that we add you and the chief to the I have a first. I second. Second by station. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, um, last thing that I have, uh, this is just informational. I'm still doing some homework on this, and I'll probably try to have something next month for you. Um, Meredith has reached out to a few people, and we've got some little estimates on that, I guess, downtown Wall Mural, like the one that they had up at one point. Um, and that's approximately around um, 25000 That's a give or take price. Uh, Jason, I will need that measured, to the length of it, to see. This one, this one. <laughs> yeah. So. No, we've got somebody going to do that, apparently. So. Could you put that measured? That so that's over there by the capers. Is that right? That wall is a party wall with our thing, so we can paint it on that wall. It used to be the old Hartford. Yeah. Next to Jerry's. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that yeah, we could take that out of that. 
So that could be a project out of that arbor. And that's something that I think would look really... Are you putting it back to what it was? Yep. The harbor? And I think the that... Retro uh, yeah, I, uh, the yeah. artist, potentially, is Aaron yeah. Kaiser out of Owensboro. Oh, nice. And uh, y'all need to research him. He has Facebook presence. He's really renowned, probably nationwide. Wonderful artist. I uh, did a mural in Owensboro um, of Johnny Depp. So, in conversation with Meredith, it's, it's kind of a taking the old Hartford mural and modernizing it. <laughs> so, I don't know what it, you know, I'm sure he's going to put out some sketches or something, but uh, his work's is phenomenal. So, so I guess, Aaron Kaiser, K-I-Z-E. I guess if you all are okay with the measurements, and this is going to be a rock that we can do this again right now if you would like, um, we can put it in the emotion. Put a motion in there, take out an ARPA for 25000 and anything over that we can regroup. I make a motion that we take $25,000 out of the ARPA funds to go toward the Hartford mural. Do I need to say his name? I or second. We uh, weren't bidding that, or no. that's who she approached? Yeah. Okay. All right, I've got a first by Stacia, second by Mary Bell. All in favor say aye. Aye. Hold the left side, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. I think the whole, yeah, Thank stand up at all. Yeah. It's under 30. Yeah, it's under 30 bid. It's under, yeah. All right. Okay. That's all I have. What a, what a productive day we've had. So thank you all. <laughs> Um, does anybody else have anything out there? Dallas, you want to get up and talk a little bit? Who knows about the academy or anything? It was a lot of fun. <laughs> 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 was uh, some Beaver Dam officers in the academy with you? Was some Beaver Dam officers? Uh, they were in the class behind me. Behind you? Okay. So they'll be graduating here in a couple of weeks. Okay. Welcome well, aboard. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Governor's scholar or anything like that. I don't know if they do that. No? He was just looking fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, Tara, do you have anything? Uh, just a question. Uh, with the destruction of Wayland, are, are we getting any of the historical documents that we can, you know, maybe add in here to our little museum or anything like I that? I haven't. I don't think there's... I mean, I other they, than the outside concrete, uh, uh, what they took down. We've got, we've got they the saved the capstone. Yeah. 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 We've got... Uh, the WPA. A couple of hundred bricks we're going to keep. And we also have a whole bunch of the gym floor that we're going to... In fact, we were looking to see. I was, I was telling them, I don't know if you all got some, some of the Mustang... If there are any drawings or officials, I remember seeing some. There's something up here somewhere, I think. Was because they, they were they were thinking about things they could do with the flooring, and one of them was they were thinking, oh well, maybe we can get a big cut one into the shape of the state of Kentucky or something. And then I I, I was thinking, oh, it'd be kind of cool if you could cut one into it, look like a Mustang. But I said at the same time, it depends on yeah, something like that would be kind of it just be the shape of it. Because I told them, I said, depending on what it looks like, like if it was kind of a three-quarter shot, I mean, it wouldn't look like anything just the outline of it. But that, yeah, something like that. So, well, anything. Just, just an idea. Yeah, if there's anything, Dustin, that you think we would remotely be interested in, we'll. we'll I don't think there was. They found much. this black's paddle. I'm on. I didn't figure. I didn't figure there's. There wasn't much. There wasn't much. I know that. I've had a couple. I had. Uh, Mayor Hendricks reach out. She wanted a couple of the bricks. Um, so if there's anything, if, can can people come up or uh, how are they doing? The, it? the it's, Facebook it's, page it's had put that, or maybe it was Chad Schottmeyer's history page, that's conversation about salvaging some of the bricks and the flooring to sell as mementos for hard for citizens to recoup some money for the actual yeah. Boys and Girls Club edition. So. Okay. Because the, the part that they... That is down now was the part I think that was built in the '60s. It had to be evaded. And now they're now they're working on now they're working on bringing down the original 
1937 portion of it. And you can really tell when you look at it, but uh, it's going to be ongoing for about the next three weeks. So, you know, yeah. but like I said, they're, they're getting, they're specifically holding back a couple hundred bricks. Uh, and like I said, they, they've already, uh, Lenny Hughes, I don't know if you're familiar with him, he worked out at Purdue for, he's retired. But he's already, he already kind of mocked up four squares of the, of the floor. And it's kind of neat because on the back, on the bottom of the floor, every single board is labeled uh, R.J. Rowan and Sons uh, flooring out of Hopkinsville. So I mean, every single board has in, that. In the old gym, in the old gym, when you're out in school there, is the basketball goals and stuff like that still there? Uh, I don't think so. I think they might be, but... There were a bunch of people that came in, uh, and you know, like we had tables and chairs. And, uh, they don't even have the old stage anymore, Jeff. Yeah. It was all, yeah, because it was the ALP. It was a render yeah. center first, so all that's kind of. It looks very different than when we went there many yeah, years ago. Yeah, it was. It, it was. I'm not going to say modernized, but it was updated okay. throughout the years. It was just. It'd be nice to have something. They ultimately moved into the new part of the building. You know, and thinking, you know, if we could get like a backboard and a go, you know, we could put back here on the back mm -hmm. wall. We Something, could have a little, yeah. You know, yeah. I don't know. It, and then the ladies, you guys can, you know, practice your three. Yeah. That's all I did. That's all right. You're fine. Thank you. Kind of wrap it over there. <laughs> Mr. Coleman, do you have anything? No, I'm tired. <laughs> well, I appreciate I just it. Got in from <laughs> All right, Stacia, do you have anything? Um, have a question. I might should already know the response. Um, what particular leash laws or ordinances do we have in the city of Hartford? <laughs> uh, dogs everywhere. Can't take my kids outside. Can't take my dog outside. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, can't I think run. Basically, just they have to be. Uh, Restrained, but I believe the county ordinance is pretty dumbsy, and we just kind of piggyback back on it. Uh, uh, yes, and what she's saying is correct. Uh, we've got we've got an old policy that states a uh, dog pound and something else. I read in there in the ordinance. Um, so is that the black dog? It's all the dogs on Oakwood Drive. I mean, there's several across the street. Yeah, several across the street for me, and then that the alley. Gravel alley beside my house that goes down to those houses. Uh, it's a big uh, Dalmatian and uh, a big a Great Dane. Great Dane. Um, and I'll, you know what that is. Like yeah. yeah. But they were chasing school bus. Like On Oakwood Drive. Then, you contact her and I'll I'll talk to the judge yeah. as well. And, but we, we do piggyback off of the county's ordinances on leash law. I think the county does have a leash law. They do have a leash law, yes. Well, I, I guess it's my next question is enforcing yeah. it. And yeah. Yeah. Aren't they looking for him to control officer right now? Uh, no, there's, I think we're, she's still active. Okay, I, I she's didn't, still I, active. I vaguely remember something about it, but I just thought Yeah, I think she's control. still active as yeah. animal control. So. All right, thank you. Um, Jerry, do you have anything? You've been off quiet. Mouth over here, put it in every time I'm going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, I didn't have anything else to say. All right. Thank you. I'm so glad he loves me. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Bell, do you have anything? Mm, not this meeting. Okay. This meeting at this time. Don't keep that <laughs> under a hat for a while. Huh? Well, got, it there, there is something, but I want to clear it first. Okay. All right. Tony, do you have anything? Okay. I'll ask for a motion to adjourn this meeting. I'll make a motion. We adjourn this meeting. Second. First and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. Meeting's adjourned.